everyday psychology. Everybody should be endowed with mental health. Here's how to improve it. Hello. Welcome to The Explanation with Sam Kneller. This episode, Everyday Psychology for Everybody, Healthy Mental Vision, comes from the book Mind Body Problem Solved and is brought to you by TheExplanation.com. Everyday Psychology for Everybody, Healthy Mental Vision. Everyday psychology for all involves preserving a positive mental framework. Here's the basis for better mental health. This is the final chapter in the sixth section on the psychology of the Nishama and Ruach. We've solved the mind-body problem and established the full composition of a human being, a dust body with the Neshama consciousness and the Ruach mind. We know that we're dealing with the spiritual, and this section is for everyday psychology for everyone. How to establish, develop, and maintain mental health for the vast majority of people who don't believe in God and Scripture. We have seen that people are blinded to God's Word. But God still clothed them. God set in motion the human mentality and the guardrails to keep humanity on the straight and narrow. All the instruction has always been present, symbolized by God clothing Adam and Eve with skin coats. But God has also given humans free choice. Human freedom has led them to imagine every possible way to live their own lives, moving further and further away from God's path. Some have plunged into the precipice. Most have strayed. Many far into the forest of darkness, despair, and anxiety. This final chapter summarizes everyday psychology, or how to preserve human consciousness and mind intact, despite the 21st century consequences we're subject to. Is it even imaginable to think the world can have favorable mental health? Yes, peace of mind will be a worldwide phenomenon. What if you could walk the streets and paths, even in the forest, day or night, and no, no one would harass you, let alone attack you. What if ladies could take public transport with no lascivious looks and gestures from male travelers? What if children weren't the brunt of fatherly mistreating or parent squabbling? What if you knew that nobody would lie about you but rather respect your competency at work? What if you didn't have to worry about drunkenness, drugs, or insults when driving? That's a lot of what-ifs, but how much would that lower your anxiety and give you peace of mind? That would be advantageous in everyday psychology. Disclaimer I am not a psychologist, and am not competent to prescribe mental health advice. This is the biblical explanation of preventative means that will lessen anxiety and enhance mental health. This is not a magic wand, a five-minute solution. It gets to the root causes and reveals how to fertilize them appropriately to grow a vibrant, stable society where individuals function with healthy bodies and wholesome minds. The above scenario is, unfortunately, illusory in today's society. That's why mental health will remain in a state of flux, if not worsen. But there are personal solutions and hope for the more or less 
distant future. The Bible relays this expectancy and the causes for these favorable circumstances. In opposition to the illusory tableau I painted above, this will be a reality in the community, nations, and worldwide. Micah chapter 4 verses 2 3 4. And many nations will come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. That's Strong's H2729. And none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. This Bible prophecy telescopes us into a future world. I do not have space to explain the what and when, but it's when housing, rurality, consumption, health, and families will all be in harmony. The result is the absence of people and events that scar our mental health today. This is positive everyday psychology for everybody. None shall make them afraid. That's H. 2729. Strong's H2729. Charad. To shudder with terror. Hence, to fear. Also, to hasten with anxiety. King James Version Translations. To be afraid. Be careful. Discomfort. Fray quake, and tremble. No more discomfort or trembling when you're alone. Note Strong's use of anxiety. That will be a bygone sentiment. Yes, unreal now, maybe even a joke for most, but that's what Scripture tells us, and it portrays a world we can only dream of today. But the factors that make this fantasy come true are in verse 2. He, that is God, will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law, that's Strong's H8451, the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word, H1697, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The law is Torah in Hebrew, H8451. The first five books of the Bible. The word is Dabar, H1697. The same Hebrew word used for the Ten Commandments in Exodus 34, verse 28. Verify this at Unlock Bible Meaning. Dot com. This worldwide free will choice of people to follow God's way will be closely coupled with a second principle. Isaiah 30 verse 21 And your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way, walk you in it, when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. The recipe for appeasing mental health is the right subject matter and the right teachers. The level of mental health in a country and the world reveals the state of what is being taught and who is teaching. The Bible denounces those teaching, coaching, 
or in leadership responsibilities, who wrongly impact the minds of children, youth, or adults. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Isaiah 8 verse 20. Note that this verse points us right back to the law, God's way, even for people who don't believe in God and Scripture. Let's be open and upfront. If society could seriously diminish or come close to eliminating divorce, child abuse, murder, illicit sex, adultery, theft, and lying, Imagine what kind of society we'd have. Talk about everyday psychology and peace of mind. Wow. Well, here's the bottom line. That list in italics is none other than the last six of the Ten Commandments. That's the law in Micah 2 verse 2 for teachers in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. Parents, that is, preventive psychology, teachers and psychologists, that's remedial psychology, have a definite basis for working with those they counsel. I'm not saying it's easy. In fact, it's downright hard because you're bucking the trajectory of society. But that's part of the recipe for mental wellness with real-world reality. Let's look at this in the overall picture. How Humans Function Consciousness consists of five main areas. How humans function, how they reason, socialize, rule, and their purpose in life. The above points on the law, rules, or ethics, and teaches whether parents or psychologists, affect the most personal aspect of consciousness, how you and I function. If you have a complex machine, like a printing press, and you don't know how it functions, it's of little value. Read this chapter for details of how humans function. The seven primary phases are dual nature, free choice, behavior, ethics, justice, self-reproach, and forgiveness. Everyday psychology helps people see their dual nature, the good and evil, yes, there is right and wrong, and make wise choices based on solid ethics, which results in appropriate behavior. By avoiding wrongdoing, people will immediately have a load lifted from their shoulders, less anxiety, and more peace of mind. Teaching how to function as a human being for oneself and in the presence of other people is everyday psychology, and it is the primary role of parents. When young children enter school, The suitable functioning should already be inculcated within each child. Imagine what that would do for the atmosphere in a class. Teaching a child how to function is not the role of a kindergarten or preschool or any school teacher. All the influences in blue in the diagram All the influences exercised by the mind, in beige in the diagram. All the influences exercised by the mind on the consciousness are part of life. Parenting means applying preventive psychology when a child is in the malleable, critical periods of the first years of their life. Everyday psychology by professional psychologists, straightens out and remedies these interior and exterior influences of their patients. The key to preventive and remedial psychology is the way, 
Remember Micah 2, verse 2. He will teach us His way. And Isaiah 30, 21, This is the way. Walk you in it. Even non-believing psychologists should know and help patients practice not killing, not lying, not stealing, and the thoughts and actions associated with the last six of the Ten Commandments. I realize this is extremely difficult with media, TV, streaming services, cartoons, gaming, real-life violence, and drama having a deep daily effect on our minds. But that's our role to the best of our abilities. Positive and negative influences are a daily combat. We have let immorality insidiously seep into our society, and we are well nigh going under. Despite that, through appropriately aware and prepared parents, teachers, coaches, and psychologists, everyday psychology can and does make a difference. That is the whole program represented by the green and red circles in the accompanying diagram, the positive and negative ethics we instill in people. Which will it be? The Ten Commandments or the Ten Anti-Commandments? The Warring Proverbs or the Sound Proverbs? This is the continual fight the good fight each of us faces in our personal lives and with those for whom we have a responsibility. How humans function is the starting point for mental health, but not sufficient without the other four aspects of consciousness. Socialize, rule, reason, and purpose. I believe you understand how our personal mode of psychological functioning will affect our socialization and management, that is, rulership, of that for which we have a responsibility. I refer you to sections 3 and 4 of Audit of Humankind for detailed workings and applications for these aspects of consciousness. Reasoning is a major subject we cannot delve into here. In the context of everyday psychology for everyone, I'd point you to a Bible principle. Our world is eating from the tree of good and evil. That's a choice those who are apart from God, for whatever reason, have to make. Psychologists and all teachers should teach the good of the tree. That good is represented by organizations and millions of individuals worldwide volunteering and accomplishing many encouraging and edifying projects. Let accurate reasoning be to do secular good works. With how humans function, I believe purpose, the fifth element of consciousness, plays a key role in mental health. Too many people, especially the younger generations, are lost. They have valid queries. I don't know who I am, where I came from, or where I'm going. They're unsettled about their future and don't see much meaning in their lives. That's the formula for despondency and hopelessness. We must help people establish short and long-term goals, their purpose, for their education skills, recreation, professions, careers, and future. Parents and counselors have a debilitating tendency to say, don't do this or that. We should avoid dangers, but we must replace dangers with safe substitutes, and they become the practical purposes people strive for and reach. 
There's nothing like the feeling of success to replace despair. There's nothing like attaining a recreational or professional goal to boost one's mental health. That's beneficial for everyday psychology. Consciousness and mind, neshama and ruach, are spiritual components of each human being. They are the most important and precious elements we possess. It behooves those in all leadership and influential roles to practice everyday psychology in an uplifting way to bring about wholesome mental health. This episode is brought to you by The Explanation Bible Institute. Unlock Bible meaning with seven keys to master biblical Hebrew, a proven method to grasp the God-given original meaning of Scripture, available at theexplanation.com. Keep seeking answers to the big questions in life and reveal the explanation.